Hi everyone uh, in the higher health community. Very, very special, most amazing guest today who I just, uh, I feel like you're a soul sister, Joey. And um, oh. so Joey Shulman is a, a chiropractic doctor and holistic nutritionist. And you may know her clinic, the Joey Shulman Weight Loss Center. And Joey has been on quite a healing journey over the past, what, year and a half, two years? which maybe we can touch briefly on. Um, and Joey is just an example, oops, sorry, uh, my camera back, it, of just keep persisting through um, all obstacles and really listen to your body, listen to your intuition, and never give up when it comes to health and your family health. I just got shivers saying that. <laughs> yeah, um, you're gonna make me cry. Uh, well, you know what, we weren't sure where this conversation would head and what we would, we, we just wanted to have a free chat and I think our energy is just going to this really important conversation of, um, of persistence when it comes to health. So can you share a little bit about your story? Yeah, briefly, my daughter got very sick and you know this, Tara and I are friends off camera and colleagues and she, I knew internally something was wrong. I just, my, you know, I was freaking out from nosebleeds to, she was diagnosed celiac to bruising, to lack of energy, to overheating. They were the weirdest symptoms ever. Mm -hmm. And finally, after blood work and blood work and inspection, it, it looked like we had a mold issue in our house. Mm -hmm. And that was the problem. And we removed her from the home. We remediated the house. I was having symptoms as well. We did this genetic testing on her. We know that her and I have these methylation issues. And we're like, okay, problem solved, right? We thought she was getting better, but she was still having these weird symptoms. And we took her to sick kids for an ultrasound. And on a very fluke ultrasound for symptoms that were very rare, they said to us, you can't leave. And I was like, pardon? They said, this is like one in five million. Faith had something called a malrotation. And what that means is that our duodenum and intestinal tract is pinned against our mesentery or back wall. Face never was. It was a birth defect. And so it was free floating. Well, you imagine all of that, that intestinal tract and transverse colon free floating. The risk is it, it can twist. And if it twists, the word they said to me is it's incompatible with life, which is never anything you want to hear when it comes to your child while you're in sick kids after everything you've been through. And I'm making this very short, Terry, you know, this was months and months. Yeah. And no, and for, because we should just highlight that, like that you went through so, so much digging and researching and trying to uncover what was going on. Sorry, I've got a tickle in my throat. <clears throat> and this was the end piece that how this is lucky, like that you found this, but it, yeah wasn't really luck either. If know. we hadn't not found it, we don't even want to talk about it. if we hadn't had, if it wasn't for an astute ultrasound technician at SickKids, mm -hmm. and then I don't know why I did this, I emailed a surgeon's name who I got out of nowhere at SickKids and said, here's my daughter's report. Surgeon, he, he doesn't know me. I heard of him through a friend of a friend. 20 minutes later, he emailed back and said, I'm a conservative man. I'm not an alarmist man. I'll see you tomorrow morning at 8 a.m. We have an emergency on our hand. Your daughter's about to go into a critical care surgery. And I was like, what? what? <laughs> After all we had been through, we had been fighting. I mean, I told you the other day, I remember sitting in your IV lounge. It's a true story. I couldn't speak to anybody there. I was weeping in your IV lounge because mm -hmm. I couldn't figure out what's wrong with my daughter. Mm -hmm. And I went through every emotion. I was devastated. I was angry. I was on my knees. Mm -hmm. I was... And here I am on TV as the face of health and quietly behind the scene, I'm literally fighting to save my daughter's life, literally. Mm -hmm. And so Faith went into surgery. Thank God Faith went into surgery December 16th because now here we are in COVID. Um, Randy oh, and I both God. wouldn't have been able to be there. It would have been a different situation. Yeah. And I knock on wood, she's, she's doing so well like she left the hospital you don't know this here she left the hospital 61.5 pounds wow so let me give you that confidence. she's 11 11 year olds are about 90 pounds 100 pounds so she left at 61.5 pounds and I'm happy to report she's 70 pounds now so that's yeah. she's doing really well she had life-saving surgery well 
you are a life-saving mom. Like I, could, I have tears thinking, I remember when you sent me the message, I was actually driving, um, stopped, let's say. Um, and I had yeah. tears in my eyes just because I, yeah, I felt like I kept checking in with you. I kept like, it was hard for us, you know, what is going on and wanting to help. And I think that's as, as naturopathic or holistic practitioners, we really feel the emotions of our, of our clients and, and anyone. And so you were just going through so much, you wouldn't rest. And you, you, when I, when I read that, that the doctor content wrote you back that you found his email address and I don't know on a website, you know, how is that? How did that happen as well? And just, and we should say your daughter's name is Faith. And uh, my daughter's name is Faith. Yeah. yeah. Faith can move mountains. Well, this is the story. Yes, thank you. You got us each a necklace with mountains, and we wear those necklaces. It's wow. so beautiful. It's nice to have mummy and daughter necklace. Mm -hmm. But this is a story of belief, faith, allopathic, and holistic mm -hmm. all coming together yeah. in a little girl's life. Because I needed you, I needed sick kids, I needed IV and me, I needed it all. I needed yeah. prayer and hope and family. And, you know, Randy and I were like clawing at each other because we were just trying to save her life, literally. Yeah. And what kind of came up for me when you were saying that is uh, often there's not a good enough communication between all medical or all health practices, right? And so you were the quarterback because you are a health practitioner yourself and you were piecing it all together. You were delving into each modality. You were becoming a doctor, a medical doctor, not a medical doctor, all of it. Um, mold specialist. <laughs> and uh, something I never wanted about, to do, but now I am. <laughs> and let's not talk about antifreeze unless you want to. But um, <laughs> um, little. I'm, I'm not a big fan of that laxative restore lax that she was put on. It's peg 3350. I, I'm okay to say that. Everyone has to do their own research. And unfortunately, yeah. you know, it did not do well by her. But in some ways I'm grateful because yeah. had she not had a total system crash, right? had I not found that malrotation, mm -hmm. I mean, Dr. Paul Wales was her surgeon. And I said, Dr. Paul, how many older malrotations have you had? He said, well, I had faith and I had a 15 year old boy. Well, the 15 year old boy, it was too late. He lost his mm. bowel. Wow. So that poor child will be on IV to feed him for the rest of his life. Mm -hmm. We got so lucky. Like, yeah. we're the, only, the, the pandemic is horrible. I'm not saying it's not. But we're the only people on the planet that 2020 is actually a better year than 2019. Because <laughs> 2019 was just so, right? Yeah. But, it, it, it's a beautiful story of allopathic, holistic, everyone coming together. It is. And the back to that communication between all modalities and, and that I think we really need to evolve our communications and um, really bridge the gap between each and respect each form of medicine and, and you know, leave no stone unturned. And um, I guess it's also on a level of the body our whole body communicates with each other and we have to look at you know how our digestive system is speaking to the brain and how our brain is speaking to our hormones and and everything has to communicate and connect and yeah the other part of the story is that i was well connected thank god because i've been in the natural health care world and i was able to order some testing that's not on the nat that's not on the conventional map it's not the regular cbc Right. But a lot of that, un this, this, this interview is taking a totally different turn, but a lot of that That's unconventional, good. it's good. A lot of that unconventional testing provided me such valuable information that will yeah. serve me and will serve me for a lifetime that my mission now is to get that sort of testing available to the masses. Yeah. Because you know the test I'm talking about, you ordered some of them. And if I, if you can't all order them, if you don't all know about them, Regular blood work is amazing. Mm -hmm. Regular blood work is outdated to a certain degree. So it can only give us a shot of so much. Right. So there's some really important things that we ordered that helped us a lot. With well, in a perfect world, if there were no costs associated with anything, 
I would want people to do the whole gamut of testing and, you know, they're expensive. They can be expensive and, and it can be hard to know if it is the right thing to do, you know, and, um, yeah. it's a, it's a mindset. It's a, it's like, you know, we talk about our cars and the expenses we go through or, you know, a car, various expenses there. And our body is the most important car. And so, um, but still it is a, it is a, a struggle to know which tests are important and it, yeah, if we could lessen costs of advanced testing, it would just, it would, it would be amazing to see all, all aspects of a person's health through that. But that said, you know, testing aside, I think there's such a piece for mindfulness and mindset and, and belief as you talked about. And, you know, in the end, I don't know if it, the testing really mattered now, you know, if we look through the whole, story um yeah what's your thought on that no I, I i agree with that i think the other part of the story is if you're whether it's your maternal instinct or your instinct about your own health mm -hmm. um if something's buzzing on the inside and you think something's wrong something's wrong but everyone's yeah. saying something's not right. wrong um I was almost kicked out of a few doctor's offices. I got in a fight with one medical doctor. It doesn't matter, medical, naturopath, mm -hmm. um, because I was told to take her to see someone for a psychiatrist or an, mm -hmm. and I, I, I'd be the first to say if Faith needed some sort of help psychologically, let's do it. I knew that I knew that I knew. There was something you more. Knew, you know I knew yeah. there's something. I, I didn't even know what a malrotation was until they found it. Mm -hmm. But I think if something is buzzing, listen, listen to yourself for clinicians listen to your patients listen to your clients um people yeah. know their bodies best, and it can seem overwhelming like do i change their food do i change outdoors or screen time or how do i get herbicides and pesticides out of their diet so what i'm trying to do in 2020 is to make that really simple for people like okay if you can't do a you can do b because there's really small steps that we can take along the way so do you find in your practice, um, your nutrition practice and uh, weight loss specialty, do you, I mean, I'm good. I may answer my question or it may be obvious, but do you feel you are a better practitioner to your clients yeah. now having gone through that? I am a better practitioner. I'm a more informed practitioner. I had to dig deeper into areas that I didn't know I was going to be digging that deep. Yeah. I'm a more empathic empathetic practitioner if that was if that's even um, <laughs> you were already well thank you uh i'm more of a crier unfortunately with, with with clients but i i think so i don't think you can go through like something that i randy and i've been through um and and not be changed for it forever mm -hmm. i mean i also think spiritually emotionally physically it truly was a miracle unfolding and where whatever religion you come from the surgeons the anesthesi uh the, the anesthesiologist the natural people were watching a miracle unfold yeah i remember when i watched the movie miracles in heaven with jennifer garner and sent you a picture of my face after watching that and <laughs> Oh my God. It was like your story almost, you know, yeah. it didn't fall down a tree, but she was blessed with something magical. All you she were was falling down a tree and we had to like, not yeah. obviously. Yeah. And this poor puppy has had a lot, but you know, kids are so incredible. If you see her, she's just this like kid, like jumpy, bouncy, Mm -hmm. She's been through a lot. She has a scar from here to here. She's got this big scar on her. It wasn't laparoscopic. They couldn't because they had to take out everything on the inside and literally rearrange it. Mm. So the one thing I can tell you is every moment, because you never think you're going to be that parent in sick kids who's quietly going into the lunchroom to get ice chips for your child post-surgical. You never think that. No. Then you are. Yeah. I don't want to think about that. <laughs> Never, ever. It did not happen oh, to anybody. God. Yeah. It not happen. Um, okay. I know we're just about to wrap up. Um, in terms of what we start, started out talking about nutrition. Um, right. We can do this again sometime. Well, yeah. So right now people, um, I, I've had people tell me 
they were really good for four weeks, six weeks, and now they're really struggling. So is there one piece of advice you can give um, A, from the healing journey that you've been through and B, just to tell clients um, as we evolve through this time period, what's your biggest message? My biggest message is that I don't even like the word biohacking and maybe even people won't like what I know what I mean by biohacking, but you can use certain things to your advantage and nutrition is one of those things and food is either working for you or against you in my opinion pro-inflammatory anti-inflammatory pro-antioxidant full of herbicides and pesticides i'm not saying 100 percent strict strength but i'm saying more than ever before the food that you're choosing matters really truly matters so whatever budget you can allot to the highest quality food out there do it. If you think grass-fed beef is more important, do it. Organic is more important, do it. If you say get it out, you get those refined flours and sugars out, 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 out. Yeah. We just, we don't have the luxury of that anymore. We know people with certain disease processes are more prone to certain things. So we want to keep our kids safe. We want to keep ourselves safe safe there is no doubt healthy eating is more nutritious there's no doubt that it is more delicious it doesn't only fuel ourselves it fuels our brain mm -hmm. and our microbiome and we know like link link those two things are too they're too connected so it's too important awesome thank you so much um i know you have a, a client to get to and we'll chat soon and hi to faith um yeah have a great day joey all right. Oh, Talk bye. to you soon. Bye. Bye. Awesome. That was good. I I'm still here. Oh, okay. Um, I stopped the recording. Um, great. I think that was really good. It was funny awesome. that that's the, the route it took, but I think that was better than any route. Yeah. Happy to talk about anything anytime. Awesome. And if you want to come um, in, I'm in the office Monday, Tuesday, Friday. So just let me know when you want an ID. Okay, that's great. I, I'm gonna get an amalgam out, a mercury oh, amalgam. Right. right, right. Maybe I'll come in a week before. Yeah, and, and then right after you have it out. And then right, yeah. Yeah. When I don't know if I should do vitamin C or if I should do a concoction. Uh, it's. I mean, you might as well get all the nutrients in, but the main treatment is the vitamin C in the bag. Yeah, the others, it's just like you might as well put them in. Um, do you have any amalgam in your mouth? You have no, you have no, no mercury. No. Bad no stuff. mercury. Um, when's the surgery or the amalgams? When are you getting them out? I don't know. I'm going to go see Dana Colson. Do you know her? Yeah. 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 I don't know her by per in person, but I know her practice. Do you hear good things? Yeah. 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 So I'm going to see her, um, soon. Okay. June well, 10th, June 10th. So I'll, I'll Oh, okay. Yeah, things will keep oh, evolving. Tara, yeah. Do you, do you take cancer patients? Um, no, I, I do, but only if they have a primary oncologist, a uh, naturopathic oncologist. And I send people to Mark Fontes. I can email you his contact info. He's amazing. Our colleague here, Lindsay, who went through breast cancer, she saw him all through. And I, I can't say enough about Mark when it comes to cancer care. Really? Okay. Yeah. 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 So I'll email you his contact info. Okay, I'll, yeah. I'll refer that up then. Okay, cool. hen. Okay, bye. Okay, take care. Bye. Bye.